It is one of the most intriguing subjects in all the Bible, and that is, how can a person die, their body goes all the way back to dust, that there is absolutely nothing that remains but ashes. And then one day, according to Scripture, when the Lord returns, He's going to bring all that back together again and give a person a resurrected body. Now, well, this is why Paul called it a mystery, because there's a lot of mystery connected to the resurrection. And we've been talking about secrets of paradise. We've been talking a little bit on this series about, about what happens to a righteous person when they die, how the soul and spirit comes out of the body and goes to be with the Lord in the third heaven in a place called paradise, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. <clears throat> now, I want to read to you in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. I want you to follow this with me on the screen right, right now. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Now, that's a word we talked about on a previous program, that those who are, have died, that you sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Now, I want you to notice that. Will God bring with him? For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. With them, I'm sorry, with them in the clouds. I don't want to leave that verse out. To meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Now, this is a verse on what theologians call the rapture. Now, the word's not in the Bible, but it is a word to describe being caught up suddenly in the air to meet the Lord. Watch carefully. We talked on a previous program, real briefly, very briefly, on soul sleep, that there are some people that believe the soul and the spirit stays in the body at the resurrection, and then Jesus comes back and raises the dead. So that means that they're, they're, they're on earth, Jesus is in heaven, Jesus comes, comes down, and then raises them, and they meet him. But look at what Paul said here. Those who are asleep, meaning those who were dead in Jesus Christ, when the Lord comes, God will bring them with Jesus. Now, here's what this means. It means that the soul and spirit of the departed loved one who has died with Christ, or, or died in Christ, who is in the paradise compartment of heaven, and um, we, 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 we could go further into this talking about paradise, and I don't want to take up all the time here. I've got two guests here, but let me lay a foundation here real quick. But if you go to Revelation chapter 6, it talks about the throne of God. And it says something very interesting in chapter 6, in verse 9. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which he held. They cried with a loud voice, How long, Lord, true and holy, dost thou uh, judge and avenge our blood? on them that dwell on the earth, and white robes were given to them, and it was said to them that they should rest for a season. So here they are resting, here they are given special robes, and here they are under the altar. Now when you go to heaven, you'll discover that the floor of God's throne is crystal glass. It's, it's glass like crystal. And he looked under that and saw a chamber, huge chamber under that, and he saw these people who had died martyrs. And so this may be a clue as to where paradise is actually located, underneath the floor of God's throne room, and you have this activity, this life going on, this thing just, just as normal as they all would be here, things, things that go on here the same way. Now, and I hope I said that right. I'm trying to think ahead here on some things. So Jesus will bring with him the souls and spirits of those who have died, and then they will be resurrected. Now, I want Pastor, by the way, Pastor, good to have you with me. Good to be with and you And Brother today. Bishop Earthquake Kelly, look at those hands. Good. I'm glad he's on my side. I'm glad he's on my side. <laughs> Uh, Pastor, uh, you, uh, would you go to 1 Corinthians 15 and mm -hmm. read the passage about the resurrection? Because we're going to comment on mm -hmm. this here. Yes, and uh, this is in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51. Uh, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep or die. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Mm. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, 
Where is thy victory? Now, Pastor, your Bible is just filled with notes. Are there some things there you'd like to share with people from that passage that God's put in your spirit? Well, you know, I've experienced uh, uh, a daughter that, that died. Yes. Up here. You know, we've talked about that in previous shows, uh, programs here. And um, one of the things the Lord said to me, and it, it's, it touches this powerfully, uh, the book of Psalms says, Precious in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. Well, you know, when you lose a loved one, and I know there are people that are watching your broadcast, some of your friends and right. supporters, that have lost loved ones, and there is nothing precious to you about someone having died. It's sorrowful and It hurts. Grief. Oh, yeah. it hurts. I mean, you yeah, know, sorrow. And God made you that way. And I was talking to God about that, mm. and I was quoting that scripture to God. Mm -hmm. I said, God, how can it be precious to you when I'm hurting so much? And the Lord said to me, mm. I didn't say... The dying process is precious to me. That's the curse. He said, what's precious to me is the death of a saint because the death is when the body, uh, when the spirit and soul leave the body and enter into the presence Boy, of the that's Lord. that's powerful. Oh. And so it's the step out of here into his mm. presence. Mm. That's, that's precious oh, to that's the Lord. Precious. The dying process is what we still battle against And today. see, the Bible says death is an enemy of God's and the last enemy He's, to be destroyed be, is death. Yeah, that's right. So he understands that process is hard on us. Yes. But when that person steps out and comes into his presence, they have, that's the, you know, that's the greatest victory a human being that's can right. ever experience ever. That's what we're living our life for it's, today. Yeah, and you know, Pastor uh, Bishop, Bishop Earthquake, <laughs> that's his nickname. Uh, you know, when, when a person, and I'm, I'm sitting here with two men in case you've missed any of the programs. Brother Walter's 17-year-old daughter was, was uh, tragically killed in a plane accident, a small plane accident. Uh, Bishop Kelly's son was shot actually by gangs in the Watts area of Los Angeles. And, and Bishop Kelly had a brain aneurysm and actually went into heaven he thought he died. He thought it was over for him, but he got to see his son there. And you know, Brother Walter, I, I'm going to say this on TV. Yes. I don't know when or how. God's going to, you're going to, maybe a vision, but you're going to see your daughter. I really believe Praise that. And, God. And not I, I, not I that you have, not it. that you have to, mm -hmm. because you have faith yeah. and you trust God. But I really believe that, that God's going to let you have just an experience, maybe through a fast or a time that you need. And someone said, well, why would God do that? Do you know why? Because listen, they're not really dead. Amen. <sighs> Oh, no, Brother Stone, they are. No, no, no. The body is decaying. That's right. Mm -hmm. But the soul and spirit, you cannot kill the soul mm -hmm. and spirit of a yes, person. Man. That's why Moses, who'd been buried 1,500 years before, appeared with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. Yep. I mean, I know a lady, and she may be watching this program right now, and I hope she is because I think the programs will be a blessing to her. But she lost a, a son that got up to go hunting one morning. He got on these uh, a four-wheeler and hit a tree. And he hit the tree so hard it killed him. It killed him probably instantly. Mm. And this mother was so sorrowful because he was, you know, he'd raised in church, been in church all of his life, loved the Lord. And he just went through that little spell where he got, got a little cold. And that's what's hard on a parent. You know, if the child gets a little cold, you struggle with that. And she was travailing before God and grieving. And she says, I grieve so bad that I said, God, if you don't help me, I physically will die. My heart will quit and I'll just go on. But I have to know, is my boy okay? All I want to know, don't know, have to know nothing else. I just want to know, is he okay? And she said, I can't tell you, Perry, if, if the Lord sent him to me or if I went into a trance. But she said, I looked over and there he was standing. Now, this is the boy that had died. He was standing at the glass window and he didn't say anything to her. And she just, she jumped up there and she said, oh, so-and-so, it's really you. And he nodded his head. He said, are you okay? And he smiled and said, and that was, that was all she needed. Yes, she says, yeah. at that moment, that's all I needed. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who loses someone is going to have that happen to them. Right. Because God is sovereign. God, God has, uh, does different things for different people. But I will tell you that if you have one who dies in the faith, it yeah. gives you great confidence in seeing them again. Now, now uh, Bishop, mm -hmm. we're talking about here the resurrection. You know, when, when you had that experience of seeing your 24-year-old son, and he actually conversed with you and you know, you're still doing the ministry that you promised him before he passed away that you would do. What does it feel like? I'm going to ask you this. I, I've, got, I've got to say this. For both of you, and I'll let Bishop answer first, what does it feel like knowing you absolutely are going to see him again, and when you do, there'll never be any separation again? Oh, that's awesome. I live for that day. Do you really? You know, I live for that day. Yes. You know, because mm. um, when you look at his pictures, at, at, at first when, 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 this, when this horrible thing happened, I would look at his, his picture and, and it would look like I would never see him again, you know, but mm -hmm. 
now I, I know I will after this experience that I had with him. It, it, it just makes me more uh, excited. Like an anticipation. Yeah, for that, for that day, you know, for that day to come. Pa so. Pastor, what yeah. about you? Does it, you know, does it add a dimension, of, a real oh, yeah. wonderful dimension to you? Do you know that? Yeah, you, ca you, you can't, confidence. you can't wait to, to get to see him again one day in the flesh. I tell you, uh, uh, Brother Perry, I was uh, praying one day and I was just talking to God and you know, you just have to develop your own prayer relationship with God. And uh, especially in times like this, because it's very unique. And uh, it's the first time I've really shared a lot of this out. Right. And I've had yeah. many, many requests for television interviews. And, and um, but the, the Spirit of the Lord told me to come and just nah, share nah. some of this. Mm. And so, um, oh, thank God. When, uh, when I was praying, I said, God, uh, the heaviness, it, it's so bad uh, when you've lost someone so dear and so alive and it is and many people have experienced this and I said this to God Perry I said God why does why does it feel like she's still right here mm. why why can't you just separate me from it so the pain oh, will go ahead and separate mm. and and you know what the Lord said to me he said because she's not dead she's alive mm. she's just in heaven mm. she's not dead she's alive and it healed me just like mm. this. Instantly. When God says your child's name to you, Amen. Amen. a million emotions go off in your spirit, Perry. And Christians Amen. have that hope. And, I, and God doesn't have to say your child's name or your loved one's name. Mm. But when, if he does, I'm just telling you, mm. a total That's right. uh, awareness of their uh, life that they are now living in heaven uh, comes alive, and that's the blessed hope that every one of us has. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. And it begins to draw you uh, and focus you into the kingdom of heaven more than ever before. I want to, I want to, in in line with this, I want to read from the book of Job, and I want to share the, share with some, something with the people from the book of Job. You know, the Bible says that God gave Job back double. Now, you know, he lost. Now imagine this: he lost ten children all at one time. With this, with the, with the house fell in with the storm. They lost their homes. He lost all his sheep, donkeys, and cattle. And he lost his health. Yes. This man was broken till there was nothing left. Amen. But God, in the end, reversed his captivity and blessed him with twice as much in the end as he had in the beginning. Now, if you read Job 42:12, it says that he had 14,000 sheep. Well, he had 7,000 in the beginning. He got double. 6,000 camels. He had 3,000 in the beginning. So now he's got double, right? Mm -hmm. We can see that, can't we? He had. Uh, a thousand yoke of oxen, he had 500 in the beginning, so he got back double. He had a thousand donkeys, he had 500 in the beginning, he got back double. But watch this. And he had seven sons and three daughters. I read that years ago and I thought, uh oh, something's wrong here. Because if you go to chapter one, he had seven sons and three daughters, mm -hmm. and they were killed. You go to Job 42, he's got seven sons and three daughters. And so I questioned the Lord. I said, the Lord, if he was to get back double, that verse should say 14 sons and six daughters. And I said, Lord, you didn't give him back double. And the Lord spoke to me and said, oh, yes, I did. He, mm. he said, seven sons were with the Lord and seven were on earth. And three yes, daughters sir, were with yes, the Lord. Sir. Three yes, were on sir. earth. Glory to God. Man, I my, read that my. and I said, you know, we really will have the link, that, that, that bond. You know, and and, and let's, let's talk about this for a moment because this really puzzles people. We know in heaven we're not married nor given in marriage. I think that's the only thing about heaven I, I might not like. <laughs> because I'd like to just be married to my wife in heaven, just keep on, you know, Amen. living in a nicer house. Amen. You know what I'm saying? Amen. And we, we understand that that's what God says. And I do believe the reason that we're not is because there is such fulfillment there. Marriage is to fulfill us here. It's for a help meet here. But there you are so fulfilled that it's not a necessity to having the, the, the marriage um, a covenant or the, the, if I can say it this way, the sexual uh, intimate uh, times that we have. Let me ask you something. Oh, my. Uh, some people feel like that when we get there, although you have a daughter, you have a son that's there, they're, they're soul and spirits with the Lord, it's not going to have that family feeling. How would you answer that? Because everything I'm seeing, Bishop, let me talk to Bishop, especially when you saw your son, it was just like he was still with you, wasn't it? Yeah, just like he was. Uh, and he called you dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called me dad. He said, I saw him. He saw me. We waved. He was on the other side of the river. I wanted to get to him and embrace him and hug him just like he had missed a day from coming over right you know and it's, it was just like family so Same so family. so pastor is there a contradiction here that we're not married nor given in marriage and yet there appears to be this 
we will be known as we were known feeling that's there. Is that a contradiction? Well, uh, I, I don't I want to put you on, a, I don't no, put no, you on the spot there. On it. I wouldn't uh, call it a contradiction as much as I'd call it a misunderstanding or a misinterpretation of the Scripture. Because in Matthew, when, when Jesus made that statement, first of all, he's talking to a bunch of people who are trying to trip him up. That's right. Over some hypothetical uh, marriage relationship. Some woman of had brothers. been married seven times so, so and seven, seven, brothers. seven men died. Right. Yeah. Right. Whose wife will she, she be in heaven? Right. That was the, the whole setting. purpose of that was to try to trip Jesus up. And he, uh, they were talking about the law. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said they're not given in marriage, in other words, like they do under the law the way that uh, there is today. Uh, nothing in the Bible says that you won't have that relationship of, uh, of unity with your uh, wife or with your children. There's well, nothing good. in the scripture that wow. says that. Yeah. What Jesus did was told them, you have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, he went on a couple yeah. of verses later and said, you have no idea what you're even uh, talking about. So he didn't necessarily answer their question. He just gave the, the, rem the, the response he mm. wanted to say. Wow, that's powerful. and uh, in heaven, absolutely, uh, uh, men are known even as there no men and women are. And uh, my wife and I've been married thirty years, and uh, we just got a covenant. We're going to live together in heaven. Hey, amen. And brother. our there children. Go. I mean, we're going to do everything God wants us yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing that implies, or even implies, uh, yeah. when you read it in its text, that yeah. that that you and your wife will live together. What I understood what Jesus was saying there is the intimate physical relationship exactly. is I not necessary so. there. That's right. Man. You won't have that there because you'll be so, you really, you'll be so fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Of course, some people, they think that's all the they can yeah. <laughs> be fulfilled. But uh, getting back on the subject here, uh, you'll be so fulfilled that that won't be n a necessity at that point because we'll be like a huge family. Right. I mean, imagine talking to Abraham, you know, I could spend a long time talking just to the patriarchs yeah. mm -hmm. and sharing with them. The other thing that I think is very important for people to understand is there is in heaven knowledge. And I heard a pastor friend, oh man, this guy is a great guy, Knoxville, Tennessee, Brother King. Brother King lost his 17-year-old son a while mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about knowledge in heaven. And I had never seen this before. And, and he quoted the verse I just quoted about the martyrs. He said, now here, and I'm going to paraphrase what he yeah. said. He said, here are these people who have been martyred on earth. Their soul and spirit is now in heaven. And notice this, how long will you not avenge and judge our blood on them that dwell on the earth. And it was said that they should rest till their fellow servants should be killed. They knew something. They knew they'd been martyred. Mm -hmm. They knew that their blood was going to be avenged from the people who did it. Mm -hmm. And they knew that others were going to have to be killed before that they could, it would all be fulfilled. Wow. And he said there, that gives you one brief example of knowledge in heaven, mm -hmm. that there is some kind of knowledge. Now, the Bible says, too, and you know this verse, we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Right. And let us run the race. And Paul really implies there that the people he listed can actually at times look in mm -hmm. and, and are encouraging us to say, run that race. That's it. You're doing it. Keep going. Keep pressing in. Yeah. And the implication is there. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that people... I don't know how much knowledge they get, but I do believe this based on uh, Brother Carter's experience, Tommy Bass, and my dad. Now, you've got to remember something. If you watch this whole series, these men did not know each other. My dad knew Tommy Bates. Those were the only two people that knew each other. All these men came together yesterday, didn't even know what they were going to discuss. Mm -hmm. And I have, I'm amazed. You went down into a pit, and Tommy described going down into a pit mm -hmm. and being, it being reversed out. And all these things, and, and you described the huge trees, and Tommy described the huge trees. And when you think about all this, you start really getting stirred, and you realize these are real experiences Amen. that men and women are having. Amen. Well, you know, in Genesis, uh, when, when um, Isaac uh, and, and Jacob, when Jacob had his experience, Jacob, the Bible says, saw angels going up. At first it says ascending yes, yes. and then descending. Uh -huh. That's right. Meaning that angels go up from the earth and then come down. So the idea that angels only come from heaven to earth mm. is not so. That's good. I believe they are messengers that uh, possibly bring messages. certain, yeah, certain, certain messages. messages. Uh, I, uh, years ago when my wife had a 25-year-old friend of hers, Tracy Davis, killed in a, in a wreck. I don't know if Charlie has a picture of Tracy. I like to show her. Man, she was the sweetest girl. Mm -hmm. And Pam just adored her. And she was killed in a wreck. Uh, Years later, I had a, a night vision. I, Pastor, I thought I died. I yeah. was mm. getting ready to go on a fishing trip, got in at 3 in the morning, had to get up at 5. I thought I died. And I went out into, it had to be paradise. Yeah. And I remember that the flowers 
it would have like 10 different shades of red. Oh, yeah. mm. You know, you take a, oh, the yeah. color red, but they were all the same shade in one flower. And I won't go into all the detail, but I do remember going into what I call a children's paradise. And all the homes look like little playhouses, but you could live in them from Romania. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, when, when I take a child from a nation, I make that part of paradise like their nation, except so. it's perfected, mm. so that they're familiar with it. Every kindred nation, tongue, tongue and right. people. Yeah, right. If yeah, people yeah. come from a mountainous area, uh, there's beautiful mountains there. If they come from a Amen. flat land of farming that, that they love, and that's what Tommy saw too. Absolutely. And I never will forget, I saw Tracy leading a, a whole bunch of young people in cor worship choruses in this building that was like a temple. Mm. And I thought, wow. And so I asked her mama, I said, uh, Tracy had one thing she could have done, just one thing. She, what would it have been? She said, work with kids. I said, thank you. Yeah, I said, God. she's Bye doing God. it. That's awesome. And so um, people today, and, and there was a, Judy Jacobs tells a story about a relative of hers that lost a daughter. I think she was like 25 years of age. And I hope I've got this correct. Judy was at my house telling this. And how that she loved babies. She mm -hmm. loved, loved, loved children. And when she went on to be with the Lord, the, the mother was saying, God, I don't understand why. And the Lord spoke to her and said, I have so many babies, so many children coming up here. I want Man. someone who loves Man. them to be able to nurture them. I know that sounds strange. I know some people will think that's weird. But you know what? Don't write me any letters complaining because I believe it this way. And you're not going to change my Amen. mind, okay? And I don't usually tell you that. I'm not being stubborn. But I tell you, I've researched some things, and I've had godly people that have had experiences with God like this. And I tell you, when you get with godly people yes, that have had experiences, you can bear witness in yes, your spirit. Yes, well, I want to thank pastor, both, both pastors for being with me. And I'm telling you what, these are great men of God, and I appreciate them so very much in, in their testimony and being able to share with you. And I know this has been a great blessing to you.